Stashik and to Tamarik for two, for two wonderful presentations. Um, we do have some time for questions. Um, we kindly ask that people do have questions for either Mark Kalernel or Stasha Krajewski, that they be um, direct and succinct and try to express them clearly. Tadej, can you help with the questions maybe for the microphone? So we're happy to open the floor to questions to either of the two speakers and to continue our discussion about the personal recollections of 1968. Um, um, how do we do it technically? We have a microphone or? There is no portable microphone, okay. but I mean There's a person no, okay. is, re is, is, is kindly requested to come here. Who has any question? So Surprise. we're getting organized, I will take the privilege of the chair. And uh, Stashek spoke about this a little bit, but Mark less so. Has your opinion of 1968 changed in the past two months? And if so, how? Have the events of the last two months changed your opinion of 50 years of history? Mark, why don't you start? And then Stasha can continue. And then one yes, uh, unfortunately, I say it with sadness that the last two months have changed my appraisal of what happened in 1968. Uh, <clears throat> I think until a couple of months ago, I, th I thought that this was something that will not happen again in Poland, and, and at least if there is not a major economic crisis. Because in a major economic crisis, it's a well-known formula, the Jews are a scapegoat, and it happened in many countries. So you remain a Marxist? I, was, I don't remain a Marxist because I was never a Marxist. I was a kid. <laughs> no, but we, we know from history, you don't have to be a Marxist, that this, this formula was used many times by different, many different regimes who found themselves in trouble. Um, the fact that it was used, that it is being used as we speak now by, for example, a prominent member of the ruling party in Poland, such as uh, Professor Pawłowicz, which is a professor, by the way, uh, and that nothing happens. I mean, you can always, you always have, you know, people who are loose cannons, who are irresponsible. This in itself is not so terrible. The scary part is that she's, rumored to be a person who has the ear of uh, the leader of the party of Kaczynski and nobody <coughs> spoke publicly among from people who are above her in the party hierarchy and said something that this was inappropriate for example there was no such reaction and this is very scary and uh, these people are well aware of uh, how ugly it is, and the only conclusion one can make is, uh, I know from various sources that Kaczynski himself is absolutely not an anti-Semite, and the fact that he does not react to such uh, terrible expressions is probably a carefully calculated political decision. He is uh, probably the best political mind in Poland now. He knows his country, he knows his voters, and his main goal is to increase the power of his party in the parliament so that they have an absolute majority and they can change the constitution to ensure they will rule forever. That's basically the program. And. Uh, the only conclusion that I can make is that he's not reacting because he, if had he reacted, that could backfire from part of his political base and uh, this seems to be a rather sad conclusion. And so, to answer your question, I think unfortunately um, it seems that what happened in 68 was not an isolated incident. Yes. Mm. Certainly for the first time in, in, I mean, the past few weeks, for the first time in decades, you know, 
people, Jews in Poland, now are thinking about emigrating again. I'm not saying that many do and many will. I don't think so, although who knows what will happen. Nobody knows the future. But now young people who are, you know, in the early 20s, you know, people in the same age I know many of us were in, the, in 1968, now are thinking that whether it is really right for them to, to, to live in Poland, although they come usually from a completely assimilated backgrounds. They, you know, had their own journey to being more Jewishly involved. Uh, we very often, you know, against their parents or certainly with no help of their parents, very often they have only very remote Jewish ancestry, like one grandparent or something like that. This is the majority of those who take part in Jewish life in Poland today. But so some of them are considering what to do, and this is really a, a new situation. In this sense, March 68 becomes alive in a, in a, a way uh, that we never thought would be the case even uh, two months ago. Now, the economic crisis certainly is not the reason here, as, and because Poland economically is doing quite well. Not a, but there was a, another crisis that was mentioned before, namely the refugee crisis in Europe, and this was a major element in the uh, political life of Poland and, uh, and the political arguments <coughs> and feelings, that, etc. And I think that, let me say something, because this has already been mentioned, but something that has not been mentioned. Namely, there were clearly attempts by some, uh, I would say, politicians to have Jews as allies against refugee Islam, is against Muslim refugees, against Islam. To have, you know, Polish nationalists together with Jews against the Islam would be, would, and so be very pro-Israel, express very pro-Israel feelings, seeing Israel as the ally to fight the Arab, that is the, is the Muslim world, is certainly something that existed and was part of the if not the official policy, though I think of the background for the policy of, of the Polish leaders. And there were Jews, that's not surprising, but there were Jews who really were thinking that it would be a good idea to have this sort of alliance. And it turned out in the last two months that, you know, from such an anti-Islamic, you know, attitudes to anti-Semitism, there is only a very short step, and this step has been made, and probably it, it, this is what explains the, the strength and the, the, the size of, those anti of the anti-Semitic expression. Islamophobia, you mean? Yes, from Islamophobia to anti-Semitism, there is a, but a, 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 a little step. And this step has been made in Poland, I would say. Now, and one more remark about, you mentioned about the House of Kaczynski, not an anti-Semite. Yes, in fact, you know, in 1980s, say, he was not different from all those people who are now his political opponents, from those, uh, you know, people from liberal intelligentsia, in, intelligentsia in Poland. And uh, he changed. So what, of course, I don't know what was the reason of his change. Is it just cal political calculation? Possibly. But maybe there is something that is really has been the case with many others in Poland. Namely, you know, they were more or less uh, trying to compete with Michnik. And, you know, it was very hard to compete with Michnik, and so they, be they, start, they began to hate Michnik. And this uh, is and you know, somehow, you know, to try to assume the position that is just against, completely oppo opposed to Michnik and what he represents. And he represents this sort of, sort of left-wing, social, democratic, liberal values uh, in Polish life. And, uh, and I think that this explains, maybe Kaczynski, I don't know, this is just a hypothesis I, I really don't know, but certainly the, the <coughs> behavior of some other people 
including some of those who were important in March 68, for example, uh, Irena Lasota, you know, uh, who was important in during that March, 8th March, uh, she was reading the resolution that began everything. And she li has been living in America for, uh, for many decades, but uh, her position is more anti meeting that is pro Kaczyński, I would say now, and she has been expressing that. And that's just an element of maybe of some personal element in politics that is important and in Poland I think is more important than most people think of. Okay. Thank you very much to, to Marek and to Stasek. Now I think we have time for two or three questions. And so people's questions so please come to Tadej Wolenski and ask them briefly to either of the speakers and we will continue for another few minutes. Please. Can you can you please come here? Just yes. a very short question. Okay. I'll speak loudly. It's okay. I would like you to know on um, the personal level, level Professor uh, Kaczewski, um, the difference between walking down the street with your kippah on today to what it was two months ago. Uh, how do you feel personally about that as far as your personal security? Okay, well, Take one more question, okay. please. And what? And one more question, please, if we have any. Here, we have one here. Great. Uh, I can't see, but please ask. I would like to know more about the Jews who stayed in Poland after March 68. What were the reasons? Uh, yes. Thank you. Okay. And do we have any questions for our local professor Carlander? Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Maybe next round. About the kippah. Of course, I never feel very um, safe wearing a kippah uh, in the street in Poland. I feel very safe when I'm at the university or some. I don't wear my kippah always, to make it clear. I, I, this is a rather tricky thing, you know, when, because when I teach logic, I don't think, or mathematics, I don't think it's relevant. When I teach something that connected to Jewish things, I do. When I go to the church, because I'm active in the Council of Christians and Jews, I always, of course, wear a kippah. But, you know, in the last, last two months, you know, la, 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 ye, yesterday it was minus eight in Poland. So I never, uh, you know, go to in the street without my heavy hat on my head. So it's hard. I can't answer the question. Uh, um, yes. And the other question was about the Jews. Why did they stay? Well, again, I tried to say that, so let me say that in perhaps in a more clear way. It's not that the default position is emigration, that somehow emigration is the right thing and those who didn't somehow did that for some strange reasons that had to be explained. No, wherever, you know, unless it's an extreme situation when they are really, you know, in, the, in, 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 in fear of your life, you know, you always balance, you know, go or not to go. So my father said, was saying, he was a professor of, at the University of Warsaw. So he had some problems, he was not promoted, etc. But, you know, emigrating would mean that he would be, uh, you know, he wouldn't use the language that he, he can use and, and uh, he would use a language that he, in which he not, was not similarly competent in, etc., etc. So he didn't want to, and I can understand that. I said that, that I could study mathematics. It was a very good environment. I didn't really feel I had to, to, to leave because of that. So there were, you know, I didn't know wh wh how and where I would study otherwise. So, and, but this was basically the family decision in my case. In, some, in other cases, again, you know, it was always, uh, you know, even if there are reasons to go, there are always reasons to stay. And this was the case in 1946. And in, by the way, the, in the Pauline Museum, the exhibition of in the 19, late 1940s is organized against that uh, uh, under this rubric to, lead, to, to, to stay or to leave. Of course, the great majority left, but the others stayed. And this was the case in 1946. 1956, 1966, and or 68, and it's the case until today. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. We have maybe time for one last question, or do I sense a crowd that wants more coffee and cookies? 
Okay, so I'd like to thank very much Professor Kaliner, Stasha Kajewski. Two wonderful individual recollections. We have a 15 minute break and we will reconvene for two wonderful movies and a discussion led by no other than Professor Ella Bauer. Thank you.